Hi guys, this is the Rugby Guru, and today we've got a very special guest on my show. It's Tony Lamborn, uh, current Blues loose forward and USA player. How are you doing, Tony? I'm good, Johan. Thanks for having me. Cool, man. Um, so, so tell me, how, how's the vibe in the in the Blues camp at the moment with Super Rugby Aotearoa? Yeah, I mean, it's really good. Um, we've just come off uh, a couple wins. I mean. Um, we, we, we were, yeah, we're buzzing, mate. We've just beaten uh, the Highlanders the other night. Um, needed a much needed win with the bonus points. So um, we've got the bye week now. So we're just having a bit of downtime this week. Um, just a bit of time with the family and, and um, get the bodies all nice and restored. And then uh, into it for the last week against the Crusaders, which is looking like it's going to be the final. Yeah, so so tell me about that. Um, as far, far as I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, if if the Crusaders win the Highlanders this week, this coming weekend, um, the title is in the back, or am I wrong with that yeah, one? I think so. So um, yeah, I think so. So if they win this week uh, against the Highlanders, then it's in the bag for them. Yeah, but I've had a stern. Word to a lot of my mates that play for the Highlanders, and I said, mate, you need to get the job done. <laughs> and a lot yeah. of them, uh, they've reassured me that they're going to do their very best to try and um, upset the upset the guys. Yeah, look, um, I'm a really big Blues fan, so I'm holding uh, thumbs up for you guys for that. Um, oh, but one yeah. thing is what I wanted to ask you guys. So how do you prepare for, for a game mentally? Like that, knowing that the the Super Rugby title is in the bag already, and say the Islanders do win next or oh, this weekend, how do you guys prepare differently for the two type of uh, scenarios? Um, first question, I think. Um, oh, yeah, it's it's a tough one. I think we're, we're all on the same page. I think, and if we know that. Look, if the Crusaders win, and we know that they've already won it, but we still want to go out with the mentality of if we beat the Crusaders, we've actually we've won it in our in our own mind. It means that we've beaten every single team um, in the comp. So yeah, I think that's just how we approach it. How we would approach it. Um, it's a tough one. It is a tough one to to, to, to swallow, but um, that's just that's just rugby. But I haven't been in that situation before where you already know that um, that the team that you're versing has already won it and you're kind of just yeah. playing for for nothing. But you're playing for a bit of pride and and um, respect. So I think if we if we were to beat the Crusaders the last week and the Crusaders already won it, but it would, it, we would gain massive respect from all of New Zealand rugby, I think around the world as well, to show that this year, 2020, that... Super Rugby Blues have been a completely different team to the past, and um, and that's what we've been going for and striving for. So, yeah, yeah. Um, no, the next question, I forgot it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's basically linked into each other. So I think we covered that. Um, the next thing that I wanted to ask you after that that loss against the Crusaders, the following week, um, Leon McDonald made a couple of changes. That was quite questionable. Was it just a rotation policy, or was there a lot of injuries involved in in the in the team lineup for for the next weekend? Yeah, look, I mean, there's been um, it's been a big season, eh? And um, playing in the Super Rugby Aotearoa has been the hardest competition that I've ever played in. That's for sure. You're playing against arguably some of the best teams in the world. Um, and week in, week out. And so it takes a toll on your body. So I think um, if I was to, to, to answer that question for um, Leon McDonald, I think it would be, yeah, it was, it was strategic in terms of um, load, how much game time they've been playing, um, giving the body a bit of a rest. Look, I mean, after the game, when, when, you, when you take a loss like that and you've, you've made a few changes, it's like, yeah, should I have made that change? It's too late now. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that's just, that's a day. So um, okay. it was definitely, it, I think, 
speaking for Leon McDonald, I think it was definitely strategic in terms of in terms of too much rugby time. So give him a bit of a rest. And look, for instance, um, T- TJ Ioni, um when he came on after he'd been on the bench for a couple of weeks, he was awesome. Yeah. When he came on against um, the Chiefs and as when he started against the Chiefs and when he, when he even when he came off the bench against the Hurricanes when we had that tight loss there, he was amazing. I, I was on the field obviously with him. I could hear him, his energy, his excitement. So, just goes to show, you know, like it did it did actually um, help him a little bit. So yeah. Okay, so you've been in the blue setup for for quite a while now, um, and you've been through the bad, and you've now been through the good as well. What would you say is different from from the past few years up until now? Uh, the the one that stands out to me the most, Johan, would be um, the culture, the team culture. It's man, it's such a good culture. The team is. Um, we we love playing each other uh, w- with each other. We love training with each other. We love being around each other. You know, we love having a beer with each other, even just going out for a coffee. Um, that that cult, the culture in the blue setup is is um, just so much so much different to it has from what it has been in the past. And um, it took obviously a few bad years and it's and you know um it, it's not something that you would always kind of think would change um change your team or make a team better because you know when you're in a team and you, you it's a it's a good team you don't really initially say oh it's our culture our culture sucks that's that's it and i'm not saying that in the past the culture sucked don't get me wrong it it definitely was it was still a it was still a good culture it just when you have such an amazing culture like a really really good culture it it's it, i put it it's just so different to play to play with i mean personally when so when i was in the hurricanes 2015 2016 we won the super rugby title i put it down to culture as well culture and and good coaching um you know the coaches would let the players drive a lot of um a lot of the trainings and the the structure around things and that's how the blues are doing it this year as well so they're, they're letting the players drive a lot of it um obviously the coaches make the final decision at the end of the day but they're putting it down it's more of a um yeah they're putting it down to you know the, the player you're out there playing how does it feel for yeah. you when i was sitting in a glass box watching you you know directing orders um so definitely the culture is is huge for me um and in future teams um i will be the first one to say that if we want to go anywhere we need to have a great culture definitely i i agree with you there um I, i'm also still playing rugby but on a on an amateur level and when your culture is good it's it's always great you play for the team and everything so i understand yeah. what you're getting there yeah um the next question that i wanted to ask you um you being involved in new zealand rugby for quite a while now what do you what do you make of uh new zealand wanting to break away from the from the south african counterparts yeah, I personally, mate, I'm a little, little bit disappointed in that. Um, I do see some of the the points that they're bringing up with the travel. Obviously, it's a big travel over there. But, you know, we, we get enough time to, to sort the body out, um, you know, and we have two weeks over there too. So it's not like yeah. we come over and we play one week and then we fly home and two weeks later we go back to South Africa. They, the structure around the competition I thought was well thought and well placed. Um, and I just think I'm, I'm pretty disappointed, really. I, I do want to play South African teams. Um, they play different to, say, your your Australian and your New Zealand um, Super Rugby teams. They're a lot more physical. We know that. They're big guys. Um, and it and it really does help uh, a player 
kind of adjust his style, even a coach, you know, you've got to play yeah. different. You've got to, you've got to nail your set piece, your scrum and your line. It needs to be like sound. It needs to be good. Otherwise you're going to get, um, you're going to get your big, your big South African boys jumping up, just stealing pill all day. And then your big props just lock in the front of the scrum down and just push over. And when your set piece is no good, you can't, it's, you struggle to win games and you have to kind of yeah. divert something else, you know, and um, I put down the blue season, but like we have a great strong uh, scrum. We have the best line out, best scrum. So, mm. you know, we put it down to that as well. Great, great set piece. Um, yeah. But I'm disappointed in, in, in the, in the, in that with the, with the, uh, with the NZIU wanting to change, um, and put, pull away from um, South African rugby. Okay. So so which tournament would you say is the best one? Uh, the Super Rugby as, as South Africa, New Zealand and Australia and Argentina or the Super Rugby Aotearoa? No, nah, the best one is the Super Rugby, um, the original one. Yeah, with Argentina. They're, they're just, they're growing, hey. They're just, they're getting better and better every year. Um Love to see them still still in. Um, obviously, South Africa, like I said, bring that different style of game. There's still um, all those teams that are in there still have the the ability to win a Super Rugby title. Um, and then, yeah, with the Aussie teams in New Zealand, that's just I, I I prefer that competition. I think then that would be the the best competition in the world for sure. Okay, that's that's quite interesting because. I know a lot of uh, New Zealand fans feel that Super Rugby Aotearoa is a lot better than, than the current form. And, and I've heard it from a couple of guys now saying that they prefer playing Super Rugby. Um, one of the main reasons for that is because you get more rest in between as well. Um, and it's probably not as physical as playing derbies every, every weekend. Yeah. I think it's just personal preference, right? Um, I mean, I'm no, I'm no spring chicken. Uh, I've been playing this a long time, um, and and from a, they're probably speaking from more of a selfish point of view, where um, they would like to have more rest for themselves, so on and so forth. Whereas I'm speaking rugby in a whole, um, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa. Um, Argentina, you know, the whole thing for for that is it's it's the best for sure. Yeah, right. So we're going to move away from from uh, Super Rugby now and move on to to USA Rugby. And with the MLR going on, um, would you see yourself to to play in that tournament? Because I I see it's quite growing quite fondly there in in the United States. Yeah, um, I mean, I do definitely see myself playing in the MLR in the future. Um, I have I have dabbled in there in the past, um, coming coming off injuries and stuff like that, and and um, and being asked to come play over there. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think it has the potential to be, um, yeah, I think it has the potential to be as good as Super Rugby. Um, I mean, if you can get. I don't know. You can get some really, really, even even some guys, even some teams from overseas. You know, France, Europe, mm. the UK. If you can get them involved, um, similar to Super Rugby, you know, there's a bit of travel involved, but I think it would just grow the sport there and worldwide. I think it'd be amazing. Um, I mean, looking at some of the signings that they've already announced already for next year, that Super Rugby is going to be. It's going, uh, sorry, um, MLR is going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Um, some of the new teams coming through. I know um, the new LA team. They're going to they're going to have a pretty yeah. strong team. They're trying to sign a lot of Super Rugby guys out of Aussie. Um, so they're, they're going to obviously you know the Aussie players are good. Um, I know New York's going to have a really strong team. Um, I've been speaking to them personally. They've they they're trying to get me over there at the moment um, for next year. Um, who knows what's happening over here? Um, haven't really made up my mind yet, but um, yeah, I think it's it's going to be great. 
honestly. Um, in terms of money, I know you know players. You got to look after yourself at the end of the day. Um, the money is definitely um, worthwhile if you're coming from overseas. They they're willing to pay good money to get you over. Um, and a good thing about it for us, if you're a Super Rugby player that's not experiencing a lot of game time, um, and you're, and they're not in, in Super Rugby teams aren't really um, like locking you in and like giving you definite answers and stuff, then I think the MLR is a is a great opportunity because yeah, I mean you're gonna get you're definitely gonna see see game time. Obviously, being a a, a, a um, French Super Rugby player. Um, the season is the exact same time as Super Rugby, so you know you can come home and play Mighty Ten Cup or um, you know your Curry Cup or uh, what's the one over there in Aussie that um, yeah yeah I can't remember the name but yeah yeah you can so yeah yeah so um, it's definitely definitely going to be it's going to be awesome. I think next next year. You know, watching MLR, you guys watching over there and, and us over here, I think um, everyone's going to get a bit of a shock about how good the quality of the rugby is. There's some amazing coaches being signed over there, a lot of a lot of guys from overseas. And even look, look, even some of the American guys that are coming through have really um, changed their coaching style. You know, they've been, they've kind of in the past have just winged it and just kind of done it their own way which is which is fine but they've also they've learned that some some ways that they coached isn't working and that's all part of coaching i mean you you, you got to um understand what works for you and what doesn't but um i think mla next year is going to be awesome yeah and and going forward in the future definitely so what would you say is the main difference between usa rugby and new zealand rugby and why USA rugby kind of struggled to get to the next level, mate. Yeah, and I think um, it's definitely. I mean, we grow up playing. We're born to play rugby here in New Zealand, right? Um, mm. we, we 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 grow up. Every childhood memory is playing playing rugby in the snow, uh, or playing rugby in the on the frosty morning with no with no boots or shoes on, getting ice cold yeah. feet. You know, <laughs> every kid in New Zealand talks about that. Uh, every kid in America doesn't talk about that. That's not, that's not, they grow up playing football, um, American football or, um, yeah. Or, or yeah, any other sport. But um, it's definitely growing in America in terms of kids playing r rugby off the bat. First thing, um, I can't tell you the number off the top of my head, but the number of junior rugby players in America is huge it's huge there is kids okay. playing rugby now you know from f from five years old onwards is amazing there's so many kids yeah. um so like i said the mlr all of that stuff it's going to be huge in the future it's just going to be great but going back to your question um yeah we grow up playing rugby it's it's in our blood we know we understand the game we know it uh i appreciate american players that are amazing athletes don't get me wrong mm. they're fit they're fast they're smart they're intelligent but when it comes to that just having it in your blood you've been playing it forever it's it's um it's just completely different um and yeah that's that's what i put it down to um i think but like i said there's massive numbers in america now and that's just only going to be better and better yeah so I don't know if 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 USA Rugby is going to host or do a bit for the hosting rights in 2027, um, but do you think that could maybe let people um, be more interested in the game that side? And do you think that is maybe what it's going to need to take to get USA Rugby to become a a bigger fan base sport in in America? Yeah, I think. Um... I mean, people do. Some people like change, right? Um, I think if they, if that's going to happen, the America America rugby going over there and, and really helping out uh, um, rugby SA, um, it'd be great for American rugby. Be, I think it'd be great for South African rugby. Um, mm. I think, yeah, like I said, people like change. They're gonna they're gonna get it, they're gonna get involved no matter what. You're gonna get rugby fans 
following rugby somewhere around the world, whether it's Super Rugby here in New Zealand or whether it's an MLR um, mixed with Super Rugby in, in uh, South Africa or South Africa coming to America, um, whether it's, you know, it's even a South American team, a, a mixed South American team, like a like an Argentina will always have their Hagoades, but, you know, you might get a team that's combined with the best um, South American guys, like um, the guys, best guys in Chile, Brazil, Euro, Uruguay, um, you know, those guys. So, who knows? And, and um, I've been hearing a few things that that might be on the cards. So just, you mm. never know what's going to pop up, you know. There's big talks about the Hawaiian rugby as well. You know, team yeah. out of Hawaii. Um, they, they're, they're even talking about it here in New Zealand, the Hawaii team coming over here. Like, it's just, um, people get excited about change. And some people like the old school, no, I just want to play, to, I just want to watch Super Rugby for the rest of my life, mm. <laughs> which yeah. is fine. But, <laughs> I, I, I don't mind change. I don't mind change at all. Right, cool, man. So there's a couple of basic questions that I want to ask you that I've asked a few other YouTubers and rugby players involved. Um, we've had this little debate on on whether rugby players do enough to to actually interact with the fans. Do you do you think as a rugby player you guys are doing enough? to interact with the fans and get the fans more involved with you guys? At the Blues, we definitely do, yeah. There's a lot of time. Um, we're all, we're all. Um, how can I say it? What's the word I'm looking for? We're all, we all know our role. We all know we have a job. It's in our contract mm. too, you know, there's no hiding. Um, and look, I mean, after, like, for instance, after the game on, on Sunday uh, against the Hollanders, we all, all the boys are out there signing signatures, even, even all the little, the little Hollanders rugby fans, they're asking for signatures and stuff like that. So we're definitely putting in the time, making an effort. Um, we, as players, we know that super rugby or rugby in general, general is nothing without its, its supporters, without its fans, without its sponsors, you know, you're not you're not yeah. going to get any love from your sponsors if you're not giving any love to the supporters. And you know, you're not going to get any love from the supporters if you're giving no love to your sponsors. So it all it's all in a big circle. So no, we definitely understand that, and we definitely put a lot of effort and time into um, our fan involve, uh, involvement with our fans, our sponsors, and so on. All right. Cool, man. Uh, it's it's good to hear it from a from a rugby player's perspective as well, because there's obviously a lot of mixed feelings around South Africa. I know New Zealand is a rugby mad country, and uh, they do basically anything for their fans. But it's a little bit different around the world, so it is a debate still up for discussion. But I'm glad to hear it from your side. Then the next question that I wanted to ask you. Um, a lot of people feel that the changes to the rules every year or two is starting to make rugby feel more like a rugby league type of thing. Do you, would you would you agree that uh, world rugby is chopping and changing the rules too often? Yeah, Johan, look, I, I'm a loose forward, so you know I I, I like to be um, I like to be right in the mix, you know, right involved in yeah. the everything. Um, I definitely do see how they're going. Um, they're taking the, the, the softer approach. You know, they're, they're trying to look after the players' bodies. You don't want people coming in from the side, cleaning out knees and doing guys' ACLs and their knees and stuff like that. Um, it does get very frustrating, you know. For a loose board, definitely have to adjust our game every year, it feels like, you know. With, um, yeah. I remember one year... It was a trial year where we, we couldn't, you literally, it was 2017, I remember it. We couldn't jackal the, there was no jackling. You could not jackal the ball. Yeah. Couldn't get over the ball. So it, the only way you could get a turnover was to, to, to barge through the ruck. And so I had to completely adjust my game. And for a loose forward and someone that prides himself on getting over the ball and getting turnovers, oh, it was so hard. Um, and then obviously they could see that, that, that that's just not, you're taking a lot of the fundamental, like, rugby the part the the main points of rugby away and you just can't do that um so a lot of the stuff that they're doing is is trial and error i think 
Yeah. Um, they obviously want to make the game better. They want to make the game safer. I understand that. But, um, yeah, I think uh, they do change it probably too often for my liking, that's for sure. Yeah. It, yeah. it is It is becoming a lot softer, a softer game. Okay, because that's the next question that I wanted to ask you, um, whether you think rugby has gone soft in a way, because I know a lot of people say rugby is too brutal. But if you look back to the past, it was a lot harder, I would say, compared to today. Um, so in your opinion, would you think rugby have gone soft? And would you recommend it to the younger children to start playing rugby? Um, it definitely, definitely has gone soft. Talking to my, my dad, um, who obviously played rugby in his earlier days, um, you know, he said, if you didn't come out, after a game with scars on your back or your back bleeding or ruck marks all over your body, then you didn't have a good game. <laughs> so, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And so um, at these stages, you can't ruck at all. So um, I definitely think that the game is, is getting softer for sure. But in saying that, today, the way it was played back then when my, my dad was playing it, 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 it just worked. <laughs> I just don't think it would be fair, you know. It's just too much, too much. It's too rough back then, but it's definitely gone too soft. And there, I think if we can get back to that happy medium, that middle area, um, uh, there will be a lot of happy players out there for sure. But in saying that, you get some guys that wouldn't don't really enjoy that part of the game. They say, no, no, it's fine the way it is. But for the kids coming through. Oh, you know, like I said, with um, with the Americans, you know, the, they will play a sport that they enjoy, which is exciting. Mm. They do that. So for the Americans to turn away from American football, the pads, which is which has um, obviously been the game that they've played for for so long, and for them to now be playing rugby, it's it speaks words. You know, it speaks for itself. So. For the for you guys, for you young guys up and coming, um, and that want to be involved in a sport that's fun, exciting, um, you know, you grow great relationships with with people, you meet your best friends, your best friends for life. Uh, I mean, some some guys that I've I've met playing rugby are my best mates and will always be my best friends, um, and you make some incredible relationships, you know. So I think. It's a no-brainer for me. Play rugby, play it from a, from the earliest age, um, so you completely understand the sport. Um, yeah, that would be my advice: just get involved as young as you can, and just and just you know embrace it, love it, get out there on a cold morning, rub heads cool, with your best mates. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you there. So, tell me the next question. Um, Tony, if if you're not allowed to answer it, I can just cut it from from the video. Um, but the next question is, um, where do you think Bill Beaumont is the right guy for for the chairman of World Rugby? And who did you think would have won, or who should have won the election between um, Bill Beaumont and Augustin Pichot? Uh, no, I'm happy to answer that. I think. Um, I think, yeah, the Argentinian, what's his name? Sorry, Augusto. Augusto, I think he, sure. would been, he would have been, he's looking to change. He's looking for change. He's, he wants the, the, the bit, be, he wants the best for world rugby. He wants the best for that. He wants the best for the fans. Um, and so I don't think you would see him allowing a lot of this, um, countries are saying, oh, look, we don't want to play in this comp anymore. You know, stuff like that. Um, that's just such a selfish thing. I think he wouldn't be allowing stuff like that. Um, also, um, also in saying that the, the guy that's there now, I keep forgetting their name. They, they both got a tough, tough name. Um, but he's also like, a, but in saying that, there's nothing wrong with change, especially if you're going to change it for the better. Um, yeah. I think he, I think he's so. Me personally, I obviously play for USA, play for the US, um, and he does not help 
uh, us play against the, some of the better teams in the world. You know, like for instance, we've got to play a game against Scotland and we beat them, you know. Uh, and and then the next week, you know, or the next um, tour after that, we're playing against Chile and beat them by, you know, mm. 70 points. It's just, I don't get it. So in terms of um, making the making it better for the country, better for the sport, better for world rugby, um, I think a change to Augusto for Augusto would have been a good thing, for sure. Yeah. Um, so the next question that I wanted to ask you, and um, I don't know if if you can maybe yeah, I don't know if you can go into detail as as well on that, but we've. There's been lots of talks about bribery and and match fixing in 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 all sorts of sports. Now, for for you as a rugby player, have you ever been approached by someone trying to to fix the game, or do you know of a situation where a team was approached to to maybe throw the game or or, or take a bribe for any kind of kind of thing in that matter? Yeah, um, no, I'm happy to answer that. I think um, from what I've, oh, we, we all we all get educated on it, so we're all aware that it, that it is out there. There are people out there that are going to try and um, bribe you and and try and match match fix and try and get you to do certain things in the game. And we're all we're all queued up on it. World Rugby tells us, uh, New Zealand Rugby uh, are onto it as well with for us. Personally, I've never been approached. I've never had anyone try and approach me or anything like that. Um, I've I've definitely had a mate <laughs> say you know what's the what's the game plan this week, but that's just a bit of banter. They know that I'm not going to yeah. tell them that. Um, and but but in saying that, I've never I've never heard of any players that I've I've played with or even played against. I've never heard of it in rugby. I've never yeah. heard of someone being approached and someone trying to fix a game. Ne- never never heard of it. And and that's that's kind of strange, right, Tony? Because because you. You hear about it in football. You hear about it in 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 cricket, but but you never kind of hear it in rugby. Um, well, why why do you think it's so different with with the game of rugby compared to football? Because we obviously know there's lots of match fixing there, and they get caught every every now and then. But with rugby, nothing happens. I think Johan. I think um, there's a lot. It's a lot more. I'm trying to think there's a lot more um room there's a lot more room for mistakes so it's too risky i think for someone that's going to try and do that you know um if they were to what's an example i remember when we did the class they used an example like someone could try and fix um uh, betting on the 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 first kick of the game going out so that mm-hmm. would mean the drop the first kickoff would be straight out on the on the full um but you know he, there could be something like where he shanks it and it doesn't go out you know yeah um whereas in in cricket it's so much easier you know where you can i don't know i don't understand cricket but i just personally i think there's too much room for error there's too much it's too risky for the punter there's too it's too risky for for um for a guy to try and to try and rig a game uh, yeah, I just think it's too risky. The last question that I wanted to ask you, and it's been quite a big problem as of late, is the the use of steroids. Um, what do you think is the main reason why some we see some of the top um, professional rugby players now starting to get exposed using steroids? Do you think there's there's a sense of pressure in performing and losing your place in the team? Uh, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing. I think um, it's performance. I think some guys are obviously um, feeling their, their their age, feeling their body, and some of the young guys that are coming through are just beasts, like just beasts, you know. Yeah. Um, so I could see why they would feel like they need to take steroids. Um, that's not something that I would ever um, lean towards, but... Um, yeah, they, like they're trying to obviously um, keep up. They're trying to be bigger and better than than everyone else, so they can keep, keep playing. Um, yeah, it's it's a tough one. I think I've got no time for it in the game. It's obviously it's cheating, and that and that's it. It's, it's cheating. 
I've got no time for cheaters. All right, cool, man. Um, so, yeah, guys, um, I've really enjoyed having Tony Lambon on the show today. Um, thank you, Tony, for, for joining me on this chat, and I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your time, man. Uh, I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you, Johan. Thanks for having me and the guys at Rugby Guru. Appreciate it. Um, and everyone watching, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, got an insight to yeah what it's like to, to be a rugby player and getting an insight of the game. Thanks very much for having me. Cool, guys. Until next time, guys, this is the Rugby Guru and this is Tony Lambon. Cheers for now.